I was during the con when this happened, but I saw this popping up all over social media, and I actually saw it retweeted by the Moms of Furries because it involves them. Y'all love the Moms of Furries, right? So the Moms of Furries, if you don't know, are like the moms of the furry fan. If you didn't know, they had an article written about them with regards to the furry fandom and what they've been doing. And I wanted to go over that today. Well, one showed up for me that had a picture, old Majira, like Twizzler, with the moms of furries. But I want to go over it today because this article is pretty fucking good. But the moms of furries, they do God's work. Like for the furry fandom, they are like probably the best representation for furries for at least like a young furry space that is healthy and safe and really like welcoming. They are a better representation than anyone that I know. And an article was written on them. They helped with an article being written about what the moms of furries do and how they're trying to spread a better perspective of the furry fandom. It, also, this is an article that has a positive outlook on furries. Who would have thought? But this article was written in support of furries. And so I just want to go over it. And also because the moms of furries are wonderful, wonderful people. I, I love them to death. And I also want to show support for them. So let's go over this article written like a few days ago during MFF. As rumors spread about furry kids, two moms want to set the record straight. They've been setting the record straight since like 2018. I've known them ever since I was part of the fandom and I've had nothing but like high praise for them. And they just keep doing what they're doing and bigger and better. And I just, I, I love them. Go and read the article if you haven't already, but we're going to go through it. I'm going to break down parts of like personal experiences that I've had with the moms of furries or with furries in general. Either way, there are a couple of uh, good points here. Also, I think this is a picture from like BLFC. This was definitely before I started going to conventions because I don't remember being at this convention when this photo was taken. I would have definitely seen it then, but I have seen this photo before. It was probably before I started getting involved in the furry sphere, but it's uh, with moms of furries with old Twizzler and Majira. But either way, let's read through this article. So main points, some people, including Joe Rogan, have spread baseless rumors about furries. Keyword, some people, probably a lot more than some. Two women known as the Moms of Furries spoke with Insider about what it's like to parent furries. So the parent perspective of furries. This is going to be nice to see. I mean, I've heard the Moms of Furries perspectives before, but hearing a bit more about it from actual moms and parents, probably a bit better to understand, you know, like, I don't know, the other side of it compared to, you know, like the kids or the sons or daughters experiences with being a furry, seeing how like the parents perceive it can maybe help with understanding it better in the future. I couldn't have stuttered any more in that last phrase than I did. But either way, that's the second point. They're on a mission to debunk misconceptions and support kids and parents in furry fandom. Alright, editors note the parents in the story are being identified by all their names to protect their children's identities. Ah, oh, moms of furries. Carrie and Joelle, I love them to death. I love them both. They're so, so sweet. I can't wait to see them again. They actually literally messaged me after MFF, and they were like, I hope you had a good MFF. I'm like, oh, I did. I miss you guys so much. Y'all are wonderful. And they're like, when are you taking us out to lunch next? I'm like, I can't go to Anthro Northwest. I wish I could. I'd go just for them if I could afford it, but I can't. Either way, go through the lens of, like, understanding furry. Like, we already know what furry's about, so we could, like, maybe critique it a little bit or add on to it. Maybe understand it a bit better with our, uh, experience so far. So let's go through it. Rumors about schools providing litter boxes for furry kids have been prevalent on social media. Even Joe Rogan recently acknowledged spreading the false claims. Remember that can of worms that was the litter boxes for furries thing that was just spread as like anti-furry propaganda? That was just hilarious to see because it's like reasonably, like realistically, you can assume that that probably didn't happen. Like there is a 99.9% .9 chance that you could have thought that this didn't happen, but it was still perceived as like, see, see, furries are actually bad. See, they want to identify as animals. It's like, no, you're just, you're trying to die on a hill that makes absolutely no sense. That, that's what some people end up doing with this. And this is the case here. Joe Rogan acknowledged spreading the false claims. So also the litter box drama was so stupid. It didn't make any sense. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is just what I've, I guess, heard. It ended up being like someone who realistically didn't like furries and I guess might have also been uh, against LGBT and was spewing propaganda about, you know, litter boxes about what her kid heard or something. And that was like the, the perception of it based on like a, uh, a board meeting for like a school or something and that's what got the ball rolling with this rumor that ended up being uh, inadvertently 
false and baseless. So that's what it's also saying here with the whole litter box thing. But either way, I don't want to go over the litter box drama that's like separate and old and that's already been somewhat debunked. So uh, let's go on to the real thing here, the important thing with the moms of furries. Two moms are on a quest to share the truth. Carrie and Joelle, who call themselves the moms of furries, have been working together since 2018 to support parents and kids in the furry community. The woman met while living in Reno, Nevada, where their teens attended school together. Our kids approached us and said they were interested in being furries, and we both had the same negative reaction, Carrie said. Luckily, we have quirky kids. We have neurodiversive kids. So we were already broken in with them saying things and then educating us. Well, there you go. I like this here that they were honest about the negative reactions at first like most parents are like my parents when they learned about you know the whole furry thing when I told them oh I'm going to a furry convention I'm interested in furries they're like oh so you're gonna wear like a furry costume and have sex at these conventions it's like the perceived notion of what it's supposed to be because you hear about you know this and that that might be misconstrued or misunderstood or negative about the fandom online and that's just like the main thing that you see about it when it's a lot more than that and it's good to see that you know even though the Moms of Furries are as supportive as they are, then initially they had the same negative reaction that pretty much all of our parents did. My parents had a bad reaction to it, but with time they, they warmed up to it. Mainly because they saw me making money through my YouTube videos uh, about the furry fandom. They're like, oh, so you can make money off of this. So clearly this isn't a bad thing. It's like, this is nice to see. As much as, you know, it's, it's not nice to see with negative reactions at first. It's nice to know that, hey, it wasn't just my parents. And it's honestly good to see that, you know, parents are being defensive about something that, you know, might not be seen as good initially, even if it is really something that's good. And also, it's good to see that they've been doing this since 2018. They've been here as long as I've been here. Also, where do these links lead? Moms of Furries. Oh, at least their Twitter. Well, there you go. That's how you can uh, support the Moms of Furries. Also, Young Furry Chill Space at Anther Northwest in, in Seattle. They've got a website now. Oh my God. Hold on. Oh my God. They have a pod- they have a lot- they've been doing a lot that I didn't even know that they were doing! What the hell?! This is awesome! I didn't even know they had like a fully fledged website and all that. I thought they just did like the- the chill space and all that. I'll go back to this after we go through the article and all that, because I, I want to look through this article and read through it first. Either way, next one. What are furries? Furries have a strong interest in animal characters with human traits. Simple yet accurate definition. Straight to the point. I- I like it. Accurate definition for the first one. Thumbs up from me. The website Fur Science says most furries create a fursona, a character used for role-playing online and in person. It adds that a small percentage of furries feel spiritually connected to animals or less than 100% human. Okay, so it, it clarifies and debunks some of the um, misconceptions. I, that's what I like about this bit. You know, the, the whole misconception that furries wish to be animals and all that. That's like a small percentage that even feel like connected to the animals or characters that they are. Carrie and Joelle said that when their teens revealed their furry interests, the moms were overwhelmed and nervous, as most parents would be. Carrie said that as her 13-year-old explained the furry subculture, she relaxed. Carrie and her teen shared a passion for dancing, and the furry dance competitions are enormously popular within the community. Okay, so leveling it with something that's good, instead of, you know, immediately trying to talk about the misconceptions or the negative aspects of it. You know, the one thing that a lot of people try to do is throw the negative aspects in your face about furries, and then your, your intuition, your, like, second nature's like, oh wait, no, but this isn't true, let me explain it. In this case, you explain it through good things that happen with it. You know, you like dancing, you know, the dance competitions are a big thing with it. You know, the charitability of furries, the community that it creates, you know, the friends that are made, a lot of the good stuff. You, you counteract the negative stuff by not immediately being defensive, like, well, no, wait, this is wrong, because then it can, you know, lead to confrontation, which not everyone wants. Go with the good stuff first, so that's good. I, I like that. And then deal with, like, the misconceptions later. That's good. I like how this is being broken down. This is pretty good. Meanwhile, Joelle said she feared that being furry meant having a fetish and that her 14-year-old was headed for trouble. So the misconception that furries are sexual deviants. Joelle said her hesitation subsided when her teen explained that their interest was in art and animals, not sex, and that most furries don't enter the fandom for sexual reasons. I mean, that's true. I mean, it's not to disclude that furries can find the fandom or find furries through, you know, the expression of adult art or adult aspects of the fandom, because there is an adult community. That's not something that we're gonna hide. You know, it's like, remember back in the day when it was like, you know, taboo to talk about sexual aspects of furries or adult aspects of furries? 
furries. Who the fuck cares now? Yeah, there are adult aspects. There's sexual aspects to furries. What's the matter with it? What, you have sex too? <laughs> But you know, it is a good point though, that it isn't all about the sex. Every fandom has a sexual side. Literally every like community in geek culture has a sexual or adult side. It's literally saying like, oh, you know, this other community doesn't have an adult side. No, there are adults in it. What the fuck do you think adults enjoy? It's literally part of being a human adult. It's just weird because that's the one thing that, the one thing that people cling on to as being like the worst thing about it because they already don't understand furries as is like by the definition alone you gotta like simplify it as much as possible and then when you also pair like sexual aspects into it then that's like a, a mess that you already don't understand and you're scared of so you think that that's the only thing about it you know because we're still at the point in some parts of like the world where sex is bad even still like <laughs> even in this day and age you know so this article might already be one of the best ones out there especially for parents with like younger kids in the furry fandom like this is probably a very big and a very good one i'd say like you know if if you're if you have parents that you need to talk to about the furry thing about being a furry or, you know you're worried about them understanding the misconceptions about it send them this article and, and send them the moms of furries they're like this is the best thing that you can do about it but yeah moms of furries 10 out of 10 love them a lot next part they learned more about the community wanting to learn more the moms road tripped with their teens to a furry convention in san jose california god forbid i could convince my mom to road trip me like five minutes down the street to a dunkin donuts for coffee let alone road trip trip all the way down to San Jose, California. <laughs> okay. Also, I think that's where FC is. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's where I'll be going this January. So, uh, hey, that'll be fun. Oh, man. From the moment we parked, we saw furries, and we were mesmerized, Carrie recalled. Throughout the weekend, we saw what a welcoming community it was. The moms said they were impressed by the elaborate costumes, character lore, original artwork, music, and dance competitions. But as much as they enjoyed the spectacle, the most powerful experience, they said, was watching their introverted kids gain confidence. See, see? See, that's a big thing. Oh my god, they didn't even mention this in any other article that I've seen. I'm so glad that it's not glossed over anymore, how the furry fandom allows people to open up and be more confident in social. Like, take for example me. If you saw any of my videos back before I was a furry, I was a social mess. I didn't know how to talk to people. Granted, I didn't have much social grace before even then and now. But like, thanks to the furry fandom and thanks to, you know, delving into the culture, I've gained a bit more confidence myself, my body, who I am, my friends, my relationships, my my life in general. Either way, next paragraph. We went to these conventions and watched our children change before our eyes, Joelle said. The smiles came. They went up and asked for pictures with their favorite makers and favorite personas. It was magical to watch our kids open up and be happy. Carrie and Joelle said they felt that there was a clear separation between the all ages and adults only portions of the convention and that restrictions for the adults only events, which they didn't let their teens attend, were enforced. Okay, which is good. You know, like don't let kids into adults only areas. That's good. And and I feel like the furry fandom, at least in person with conventions, has done a much better job at that. Or always has done a good job. Why am I saying started? Like, I feel like it's always done a good job at, you know, separating adult-only events from, you know, regular all age events which is good you know ever since i've been in the fandom since like 2018 i've seen that separation which has been good and it's been needed so i'm glad that you know it's being acknowledged here but yeah anyways they support furry families the next part talking about what moms of furries do to support parents and kids new to the furry fandom they posted a youtube video about their experience and they officially became the moms of furries in the four years since their first conference carrie and joelle have built a social media presence and launched the young furry chill space a concept they bring to furry conventions nationwide to give kids and parents a place to decompress, chat, and find allies. That was a long statement. Also, the Young Furry Chill Space, like I said, you know, I think there's... Oh! Oh, yo! This is cute! Oh, this is part of their website! Support the Moms of Furries. We take our Young Furry Chill Space to several conventions throughout the year to offer a space for young community members and their chaperones to meet others, play games, make DIY badges, or just take a break from the con. Your support helps us make our YFCS the best it can be. Oh! Oh, oh my god, this is so cute. I love the moms. They're so awesome. I remember they started their young furry chill space, I think back at Anthrocon. Not Anth- no, sorry. I think the moms started their young furry chill space, I believe at Anthro Northwest. That was like the first one that they did back in like, I think either 2018 or 2019. 
I know I went to one of the first ones to like go and support them and say hi and see how they were doing, you know, but I know that they started this back a few years ago. And since then, it's been kind of a big hit. Like I remember last time I went to Anthro Northwest in 2021, Um, they were doing the Young Furry Chill Space for longer periods of time, but they were also doing like sort of like a party style like event, like after hours during like the night. Uh, you know how furries have, like, room parties with, like, drinks or whatever? Well, the Moms of Furries were doing, like, a mock event similar to that without, like, obviously non-alcoholic beverages, you know? They were just, like, having, like, a nice little dance party. What you would probably expect from, like, a middle school dance, to be honest, you know? But it was, like, supervised. It was sort of, like, an experience for, like, young furries to be able to enjoy something similar to like a furry room party be at a furry room party i would be willing to have like an extra four to five dollars on like my con badge in order to support the moms of furries to be able to host like these panels and these uh chill spaces at like every convention but either way, moving on. All right, last paragraph. We've run into kids who don't have support in their lives, but we have also met a lot of supportive parents, Joelle said. At every single convention, we end up crying with someone because people want to support and they want to share their stories. And that's it. That's wholesome. You know, that was a pretty good article. I feel like it's missing like a little bit here at the end of like maybe like a wrap up about like, you know, the reality of furries versus the misconceptions. Maybe even just like a repetition from like the beginning or so. You know how it's like a, a, a paper or an essay or something. You have like the introduction talking about the problem and then you have like a, a conclusion i think it's missing a conclusion here maybe a little bit but honestly this is a really good article i think this is excellent and i think the moms of furries have been long due for more love and support for what they do and a lot of credit for what they've done in the furry fandom i think this is absolutely necessary and is really good and the fact that it's also being recommended on like google and mozilla firefox i've seen it pop up time and time again when i've gone to like my mobile place and i see them like see an article mentioned for like news this is good and the fact that it's being recommended more is also good but yeah honestly i'm glad that this article was made and it's nice to see an article that really is made in a good light towards furries at least nowadays and not for the sake of you know hopping on like a bandwagon of like oh furries aren't bad you know to talk about like the drama or something in mainstream this is just from what i know an article that just happened out of nowhere some good aspects about furries so that's good go and support the moms of furries here they do god's work they really are doing the best that they can and uh, support them if you want more of a uh, young furry chill space. I think that is absolutely something that should happen and I think it's good. But yeah, that's about it. That's what I wanted to cover. This article was good. Good job, Insider.